Good evening. Uh, great to be here with you today. Hello, Sophie. Uh, I'm happy to welcome our participants on Zoom and LinkedIn Live. My name is Lukas Hofmann. I'm a trained product designer and now project manager at International Design Center Berlin. And it is my pleasure to welcome you to this new edition of our Talent Tracks sessions uh, on the UX Design Awards, where we present outstanding projects from our new Talent Award category, offering behind the scenes looks at award-winning projects, shining a spotlight on some of the most promising young experienced designers out there. And today we're here to shine that spotlight on our guest, Sophie Rolls-Open, and her award-winning project, Louise Hug, a tool that enhances creativity, relaxation, and independency for people with special needs. A design project with such an empowering sanity spending outcome is exactly what we as the UX Design Awards are trying to promote. The awards are a global competition for excellent experience design organized by the International Design Center Berlin, IDC, which is a nonprofit membership uh, institution based in Germany since 1968 in Berlin. Our mission as NEZ is to promote the value of design and business in business society, and we do that in the field of UX design in particular with our UX Design Awards since 2015 to raise recognition for UX design in general, and especially through showing how good UX can be responsive, uh, sorry, responsible, integrative, even empowering, and create opportunities for all. And following this credo, the awards endorse companies and individuals like Sophie who enter the competition with designs that stand out as being especially innovative, uh, offering intuitive access to good overall user experience and create satisfaction for the user. Our current call for entries is uh, on until May 31st, and you're all invited to enter the competition with your best projects. After the jury has done its work, we will promote excellent example of user experience across industries and fields by labeling best practice to the outside world we want to raise public awareness for the relevance of UX design even as a social issue but the awards are also meant as a platform for the inside world of UX design striving to cultivate knowledge sharing and networking between professionals and talents as such we're holding the talent track sessions also for your exchange inspiration and education so if there are any questions coming up make sure to engage and ask personally while you have the chance uh, with Sophie. So it's my pleasure to have you here with us today. Uh, you've created an interactive sound device that can empower people with special needs, enhancing their creativity and ultimately confidence. And so far, this must have been a very or purely human-centered design process, also along rather specific user needs. And I'm much looking forward to hear how this went down. Uh, so again, if you from the audience have any questions on that, the team and I will collect questions from the chat, or you just raise your hands, flick the cameras on, and you're invited to ask. And now enough of me. Uh, Sophie, the stage is yours. So uh, again, thank you for that kind introduction. And uh, everybody, welcome to my little presentation about my project, Lewis Hack. Um, yeah, first of all, I'm Sophie. I'm the creator behind Lewis Hack. And I did my bachelor's degree last year at HTV Berlin. And uh, yeah, now I will offer some more insights to this project. So uh, the today's agenda, agenda is gonna be um, my personal motivation, then uh, inclus inclusivity in our society, impact of design, Lewis Hack, and what did I learn? So first, my personal motivation uh, is pretty clearly, or was pretty clearly my little brother, Louis. And by growing up with him, I learned a lot about the reality that people with special needs live in, but also the reality of the people taking care of um, people with special needs. And um, also to, or three people in my surrounding were my main motivation. Um, one, Katrin, you can see in the middle, my mother and also my Louis' mother. She is a physical therapist and she specializes in a therapeutic horseback riding for people with special needs. And uh, Manuel and his mom, Angelica. Manuel is a 14 year old teenager with special needs. So early on in this project, it was very clear to me that there is a lack of products that are age appropriate for teenagers with special needs, just fun to use and um, offer uh, usage in a self-determined way. 
So, yeah, I have some quotes from my uh, design partners. And I'm gonna start with Katrin. She said, I always have a late and bad conscience whether I can entertain Lewis according to his needs. He should also have the opportunity to use products for him self-reliantly. And then from Angelica, the mother of Manuel. Manuel is actually a musician. He loves everything that has to do with music. You can really notice how he becomes more creative while making music. He would get other objects and use them to operate an instrument. And um, at this stage, it was already um, pretty clear to me that I wanted to go in the direction of sound because sound has the um, ability to get to people on an emotional basis and to make people feel something. And I experienced it with my little brother, Louis, who always loved it when we sang to him and played music. And um, Manuel is also a good example of how important music is in a person's life. So let's carry on. And in this context of growing up with a person who has special needs, I saw how the reality was. So it was clear to me that while some products for people with special needs are getting more complicated when, when they grow up, um, especially here, the shower chair in the middle and the uh, wheelchair on the right side show how complicated these products are. And these are products made for people with special needs. So it's their products and still, I mean, I don't even understand every, anything that's going or everything that's going on there. There are so many screws. There are so many little tiny sharp edges. There are straps, there are um, tubes going around and brakes and whatever. And especially people that are not able to control their arms um, every time of the day, these products can hold so many possibilities for injuries. So I ask myself, why are some things getting more complicated or to com are too complicated for people to understand. And then other things are just way too childish. Like how can it be that an 18 year old is still playing with childlike toys? And I looked around in uh, Louis' room and I noticed that even though he was a teenager, he was still somehow kept in a childlike environment. Yeah, and uh, that really got me thinking. And I asked myself, how does inclusion um, look like in our society? Because we all know inclusion in the school context. Um, we all know what it means there. But what happens if people uh, are finished with school and are just in the, um, yeah, in the everyday life? And I asked myself, how can it be that I don't have any friends my age with special needs? Like, how can it be? Especially because I am, I was already in the context of uh, having people around me with special needs. And I thought, oh, the answer must be, that's because we're all so different. And we are also different, but are we really that different? that we could have nothing in common. And I think that we are not. <laughs> I think that um, there's a lot of common ground. And I think, especially when you think about what people truly want, of course, our everyday life is different. And of course, the conflicts or the problems we are facing are different. But every person just simply wants to express themselves. Every person has the urge to find self-fulfillment in the things we do. And everybody wants to be creative and show their creative sides. And I think this creativity, this is our common ground. And I think, or well, one of the common grounds. And I think everybody wants to, or 
like should get the opportunity to creatively create something and exchange exp experiences with other people. So I thought as a designer, <laughs> what can the impact of design be here? And I, I had this idea or had this thought that equality is only guaranteed when every person not only has the access to the same input, but when the way input is provided is adaptable to the needs of every person. So meaning by that, I, um, I figured for myself, okay, what is my job as a designer? Or how would I describe myself as a designer? And I would say um, that designers just simply cannot work in a bubble. They cannot stay in uh, their little design bubble. And I think that is something that's very dear to me because I wanna be the linking piece. I wanna be a linking piece between different industries. I wanna be a linking piece um, between different experts. And then of course the user, because when you observe the reality of people and of users and of experts and yeah, everybody who is playing a role in um, a design process, you can create real solutions for real people. And by doing that, you can increase or I can increase uh, usability and minimize frustration in my our product. And I think this, is mi this minimize frustration really changed something in my way of thinking about design because by minimizing frustration, you can empower, you empower users to be more confident. And this confident can, confidence can be used to um, limit the, the fear of failure. And this fear, the, when the fear of failure falls down and it's not important anymore, then um, you can explore your creativity and try out new ideas. So this is why I think that um, confident creativity is very close, closely related to each other. And inclusive and universal design has the opportunity to spark that confidence and especially spark that confidence in people that might, um, might isolate themselves. So now I'm moving on to uh, my product, Lewis Hack. I wanna talk about the, like I had a loose design briefing and uh, just had this idea of how it should look like and what it should do. So now I'm, uh, yeah, first of all, talking about the aesthetics. I wanted to have something that is, um, that can be modular because it can adapt to people. And by that, I meant um, not adapt in like blocks putting together. I wanted uh, adaptability or modularity through formability. I wanted it to be warm and soft and squishy and be something that you like around to uh, around your body that what you, you would like to lay on or um, yeah interact with. So it should be warm and soft, friendly. It should be calm, and it should be sturdy. And it should allow safe and free interaction. It should not be too complicated. And it should be easy to understand. So moving on to the, um, to the functions. Um, I wanted it to provide sound by touching it because the acoustic and the tactile senses are very simple. They are um, very 
they don't have to be understood. They can be both. They can both be felt. They don't have to be, um, yeah, too much analyzed. And that is something that is, yeah, very specific for these two senses. And it these two senses can affect the user on an emotional base. It can affect the user's feelings, and it can talk to the heart of the user rather than the rational mind. I wanted it to be uh, used at home because I wanted it to be just fun. <laughs> I wanted it to be uh, something that is out of the whole context of learning and improving and, and continuously being, um, having to learn new things because I saw with my brother that his, the main part of his day was in school and there he had many opportunities to uh, learn new things and he had been, uh, yeah, he had been educated there in every um, aspect. But at home, he just wanted to be in front of the TV or he just wanted to have fun. Then I wanted my um, product to be harmless, obviously, because I saw the sharp edges at the wheelchairs and the little um, yeah, screws and everything. So I wanted it to be soft and friendly, thereby harmless. I wanted it to be adaptable to different positions because um, people with disabilities and every person uh, is not always in the same position and especially sitting can be um, can just be hard at some point uh, so I wanted something that a person can use while laying in it or yeah whatever sitting in a fat boy or whatever so yeah I wanted something that had no need to read a manual for it should be self-explanatory. It should be independently, independently um, operable and enable relaxation of the user. So having these um, things made up for me and, and having these things in my mind, I started uh, thinking about, okay, so if I do something with sound, what are the sounds going to be? I met a sound engineer. We went to the studio and we started creating some um, methods of how sound can be transported or a sound can be provided for the user. The first um, option was to have a melody playing in the background while using the product and having um, tunes you can play to it that would never be um, not harmonizing with the sound playing in the background. Just to eradicate this first, maybe skepticism to get in contact with this product. And then I thought, okay, maybe we could, like, if this is not working, the second option could be um, working with beats and maybe rhythms to just to activate the user to uh, play to the beats. So with this in mind and with uh, this uh, little options of how sound could be provided, I made a very uh, rough little mock-up and uh, you can see it on the right side, the photo. Uh, Manuel is playing, it's just foam and um, yeah, little push buttons and little, uh, uh, yeah, just little push buttons. And it was very interesting because the green line in this graph shows the expected user journey. So what I was thinking of going into this first user test and, and um, I just what I thought was what it's going to look like. Uh, yeah. But I got there and here in the beginning, we like, both journeys start the same. And it's, best, it's important to say here that if 
you want a person to be able to open up to new things and open up to music and allow the person to feel something the basic needs of a human being needs need to be satisfied because if you're sitting uncomfortably if you are hungry or if you are thirsty then you just won't open up to new experiences or it would be harder for you to open up to new experiences so by starting at this uh, little point in the beginning, um, Manuel was pleased to see me, and but he was very neutral. While I was setting it up, this device, he was very irritated because he, because I mean, at this stage, this product still really looked wild. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so he was irritated and he looked towards his mom, which was sitting on the left side of this photo. So <laughs> always check in with her. And I started setting up the computer and I started opening up the sound program and I just played some tunes for him. And then he wanted to join me. And it was attracting attention and he wanted to engage with the product, but he wasn't still wasn't too sure about it. Um, after a little while, I like stepped back into the background a little bit and let him play alone on his own. And he was a little bit reluctant. He needed some reassurance. And there I noticed that both options, the music option in the back where this little melody was playing and also the beat options were really counterproductive because he, he didn't think he had to engage with the product because it was already playing sounds. So why should, why would, should he play also sounds? So yeah, so I turned both off and just let him play the music and it, yeah, it, he started to engaging with it more. He got more confident. His mom and I, we took another step back into the background. We talked a little bit and just let him do it. And his enthusiasm was improving because like, especially because he was operating on his own and he started like really punching the buttons and really getting enthusiastic. And all of a sudden we were looking over and we were seeing that he, um, with his non-paralyzed hand, he took his paralyzed hand and played with it because he wanted to know whether it would be a different experience. And that is something, I mean, as you can see, the blue line is going way up. And uh, this is something very amazing. I didn't think that it would be that pleasant for him that he wanted, would wanted to make it a whole other experience for his whole body. And yeah, so after a little while, I mean, you can see after approximately 30 minutes, which is a very long time engaging with a product, um, he was getting a little bit tired of it and we uh, put it away and we talked about how he'd liked it and, and what we could improve, like what would be awesome for him. And yeah, so with this first testing, I went to my uh, design partner, Katrin, and uh, she said that it's incredible to see how Manuel got involved with the device with so little shyness and enormous curiosity. I see the inclusion of his paralyzed side as a sign of how strong the stimulus is that comes from this device. And I would say that this is, this was a huge milestone because I thought he would have fun operating it, but I didn't think that he would have so much confidence that he would get so creative with it. Um, no, okay. So from this, I thought, okay, so how could this product look like? It could be a little room. A little room is something like a box. It sounds a little bit awkward, but it's a box that a person can lay in and it's just easier to understand because the room is smaller and it's easier to understand your body and it's easier to 
engage with your surrounding. But the problem is that I didn't want isolation. I didn't want to isolate, isolate the user. I wanted to empower um, yeah, playing with other people. Another option was a second skin. And uh, this was, so this failed because I didn't want people to be touched when they don't want to be touched. So, I mean, experiencing your own body is something that's very important to a human being. But then again, I wanted other people to join in and, and start creating with the user. And yeah, so this aspect of not everybody wants to be touched has to be, was like the uh, point where I said, okay, this is not working out so good. And then the um, third option is an add-on add in form of a pillow. And this uh, was it, because a pillow allows everybody to join in. A pillow is soft, it's friendly, it's uh, sturdy, so it can take a punch. And uh, yeah, it was just the perfect way to go from there on. Here I thought some ways of fixating it on the user's body because we didn't want it to fall off or um, yeah, be push, pushed off. And uh, yeah, so here I decided on the right, on the picture on the right side, because it hangs on to the user um, by having these little arms. And it doesn't need a second part for it to just hang on to the user. So I decided on this and it fits perfectly <laughs> with the description of hug. And um, yeah, because it hugs the user. After having the layout of this and having how, figuring out how it should look like, I uh, thought about the sounds again. <laughs> how can the, sound pads be located on this product and what would be uh, yeah, the perfect solution for this. And I had different options. I was playing around with like maybe more sound pads, maybe less sound pads. And should they be like, what form should they have? Should they have a lot of space in between them? Should they be very close together? And I decided on having 11, I think it's 11 now. Yeah, 11 sound pads in with relatively wide spaces in between so that even if um, the user is not really able to uh, to touch one sound pad uh, like a small sound pad a bigger sound pad with a more, more much more space around it should be easier to reach and uh, also like at what angle should they start the sound pads, what is comfortable for a user to use, and also um, the size of it, because in Manuel's case with his one paralyzed arm, uh, I wanted the user to still experience the whole range of uh, sound pads. All right. So, um, yeah, so here, it is, so here, it's, here, that point was the point where I said, okay, it cannot just be that product. It is gonna be some sort of platform. It is gonna be also a modular system because with an app, you have the ability to um, choose audio ins and audio outs. And you have also the uh, opportunity to put different sounds on different sound pads. You can record your session and, and show it to other people afterwards. You can get uh, recognition for that and acknowledgement for that. And you could, uh, yeah, and you could uh, choose where you wanna play your music. So, not everyone can use technology like smartphones. 
And here it needs to be said that normally if a person cannot use technology like smartphones, they usually have people surrounding them, taking care of them, and they can usually use a smartphone. So they would set it up and uh, the user would be in front of his Lewis hack and the user would have, if the user is not um, able to uh, engage with technology like smartphones, the user can have a little body analyzing sensor. In this case, it's a heart rate sensor. Because I asked myself, um, how can I create a product that can be used in a self-determined way by people that might not be able to do anything on their own? And um, so, yeah, so we just quickly chose the heart rate um, sensor. And here I have to say that it does not really matter what kind of sensor it is. It doesn't really matter if it analyzes your body data, your whole body data, or if it analyzes your heart rate. Um, the importance is just that it communicates with the sound software. And this is another example of how modular this uh, whole system is and how, how modular this project is. Yeah, here, um, another ex some other examples how uh, Lewis Hack is hugging the user and holding on to the user. It can be used in a wheelchair, it can be used uh, in a sofa. It can just be used as a pillow when it's switched off. <laughs> and yeah, so now I wanna talk about the whole confidence creativity relationship again. Because when we were making these photos in a photo studio, it was all very um, new to Manuel and he was very impressed by everything. But still, after like, getting familiar with the camera, with the flashlights, whatever, um, he was, he, he knew that he was the one all of this is for. And he started to get crazy with it again. And he started pinching it, as you can see here. And he, uh, he started playing with his head. And then he started just as his mother said in the beginning of this project, um, when he's really um, experimenting with music and with an instrument, he likes to get his favorite toys and play music with them. And that's what we did here or what he initiated here. And yeah, with his favorite toy, we played a little bit. And yeah, now very importantly, what did I learn? Um, I learned a lot, but I, I think the, the biggest thing I learned is that this project and having this product um, was putting Manuel in a position of a trendsetter. And that is something that was completely new to him because normally he's always looking at other kids playing and, and thinking about or playing and envies them. And now he was the one being envied for his cool product. And Others came to him and asked him if they could join in and um, whether they could have a product like this as well, because they wanted to use it as well. And I think this effect on the people, on Manuel and also on the people surrounding Manuel and the people who saw this product, who I presented it to, um, I think that was the main thing I learned. And I think that was the main thing why I can say with confidence that we are not really that different because we all want the same from our products. We want our products and technology to support us. And we all want products that enable us to create. And I think that is really the biggest thing I learned within this um, process. That's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Thank you all for joining. Um, yeah.
let me know if you have any questions. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> I have uh, a lot of praise from LinkedIn and, <laughs> uh, and one, actually one question uh, from Peter Z, uh, sales director, who's obviously sourcing uh, materials and he's asking, what is the biggest challenge now? So I guess he's asking for the mm -hmm. direction this project has been taking or it will be taking in the future. Um, do you, are you working on it right now or what, what are your imminent plans? Um, so right now, the biggest challenge is actually getting all this feedback that they like the product. Where can I buy it? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think that's one part due to the pro to the um, looks of the prototype and the prototype is working. I think it looks like a finished pro product. Mm -hmm. And the hardest part right now is um, explaining that it's not finished yet. And in order to um, finish it, I would need uh, IT specialists and someone who can produce it. So right now, this is the hardest part, like explaining to people why I'm not actively producing it with someone. Mm. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. It, it, looks, it looks pretty done. It's amazing how you uh, really developed very yeah, close, to, close to production looking prototyping. That's impressive. Uh, I have a question concerning the actual music qualities from our award director. If you could share some, some information about the, the actual musical qualities. So right now, um, the thing that's really making the music or where the sound program is on is the computer. And you can uh, hook up, or I usually, when I use it, I hook up the computer to a, a Bluetooth speaker. So it is a very good quality, depends on the Bluetooth speaker you're using. And, yeah. and did I get it right? The, the sounds can be... Uh, kind of imported through the digital interface on the smartphone? Yes, yes. Okay, so you can, you can... Yeah. And later, I mean, right now, this prototype cannot do it, but later it uh, should be able to record sounds and then you can assign the sounds to a sound pad or you can just download sound packages and whatever. Mm -hmm. Very good. I get... I... A uh, comment from um, out of Network Third Plus. Uh, you based the prototype on just one user. How would you transfer the findings on many people with diverse special needs? So question. That is a very good question. Um, it is. So I've been I've not been working just with one user, and. Um, I've been working with uh, several people that actually work with people with disabilities. We, I've been working with an um, orthopedics engineer and I've been working with um, uh, like different teachers at schools for people with special needs and um, diff different therapists. Thera oh, I lost the word. <laughs> uh, uh, therapists? Therapist, yes, yeah, therapist. <laughs> and um, so I, I've got a lot of feedback on it. And it's it was very hard for me in the beginning to determine who should this be for. And usually I so in the beginning I said it should be for my brother, for the for the um, disability that my brother Lewis had, which was a harmed uh, nervous system heart and central nervous system and um it is it however the diagnosis no whatever the the reason for a humped uh, central nervous system is the symptoms are pretty um common with ev or pretty similar with every um, person mm. but still like <laughs> It's like every person's different, every person's preferences are different, and every person's body shapes are different. I here I have to say for the finished product, I have to say it is usable, so it can be used by many different people because it is still a, I call it platform, 
and it, it connects different technologies. And whether this technology, like whether this sensor is a heart rate sensor or it's another sensor, it doesn't really matter. It can be an eye tracking sensor or whatever. It just needs to, it needs to communicate with the sound program. It just needs to indicate what the sound program should be doing. So yeah, I hope this clarifies it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a couple more. There is uh, Jose Carlos Nepomuceno. I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, asking if you could share a sample of the sound you made when testing. I. Um, while testing, while the, so I don't have a sound sample from the first test we did um, from the mock-up. I uh, do have the sound samples integrated in my video uh, on the UX design award page. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, that's basically it, but uh, yeah. So yeah, the out. sounds are integrated in the video. So the sounds you can hear coming mm -hmm. from the device, like from the actual testing. Yeah, yeah. From when when Manuel touches the mm -hmm. device in the video, that's the sound that it really does. But it's technically not fixed to that. You could change that any time, right? Yeah, yeah. So, it could be uh, it could be a piano. It could be a hand drum. It could be anything. Okay. Um, I had one more question, but I don't find it right now in the chat. There is uh, definitely some some praise, as I said. Um, uh, sorry, I'm stuck in the chat. Mike S is saying confidence, confidence, creativity. He loves it, and I have uh, oh, I have jury member Tapani Jokinen uh, live. If he wants to say something about the product, his uh, his statement, uh, his jury statement was. A great example of how technology can serve humans and provide empowerment. Tapani, if you like, you could take this chance. Hi. Hi. Uh, pleasure to see you. And, and it was really great to see your process and how you how you have actually made the whole journey. Um, the great products like this, I mean, it it's pretty much focused on, on special needs and others. But I think that everyone have this kind of needs to this type of, and everybody have needs for Huck and Louis Huck type of thing. I would love to have that product and play with, with that. And, and it's, it's also that the beauty of that is, is that you actually uh, in create enjoyment around you that it's, it's not, you know, only for you. It's, it's, I, I think that it's, it's really beautiful beautiful way and as I said uh, it's really designed with love yeah absolutely I would yeah, also thanks. stress that especially compared to the machinery that you usually have around people with special needs supporting them it's really as you said screws and bolts looking uh, out at any point that's it's really a contrast it's really yeah it's an object it's a designed object not a not an engineered machine it's a nice contrast too what do you often see? Yeah. Uh, Tavani, I think we lost we lost the voice. Uh, was it just me? I don't hear anything. <laughs> no, he's muted. Oh no, anyway, okay, I'll take another comment. Sorry. I'll take another comment from Ima Muria out of Network Third Plus. Uh, she loves the way you not just focus on, on the product itself, but how you executed the process with a real user in a healthy manner. I really integrated your, your personas very well. So um, the, user, the user is more comfortable using the product. More praise from LinkedIn. <laughs> very good. <laughs> So I have um, I have one more actually sharing that you grew up in an environment uh, with people with special needs right at, at your side. I suspect that you have grown up with a different perspective on the world, uh, seeing more clearly than most of us how a fast modern society in everyday life sometimes excludes people with special needs in, in many places actually. Did this design process give you a new perspective, yet another twist on this, a new point of view you did not have or you didn't take before, or was it all kind of known to you? Mm, well, I 
Um, so I have to start at the beginning. So when I started this project, I have to say that my little brother, he was very severely handicapped. So I always thought, um, of course, they need special products, custom products. And for me, it was always pretty clear that he, for him, normal products or products that we and my siblings were using were not something that he could use. He always needed a custom product for everything. That was what I thought in the beginning. But throughout the design process, I learned that it's not. <laughs> I mean, of course, I mean, what I said in the, for the first testing, basic needs need to be satisfied in order for a person to be able to, to, um, to uh, get new experiences and being open for new experiences. Um, so for people who are severely handicapped like my brother was, um, he, of course, he needs a special chair to sit in in order to use this product. But this is something that I learned is that everybody can get the same input. It just needs, like at some point, custom products are very necessary and custom, for, for example, custom wheelchairs are ex very necessary. But at other points, we are not, we don't need custom products that much. It just needs to be, an inclusive or a universal uh, approach should just be included in the beginning of a product. And um, yeah, this, I think this was something that I really learned um, that, that when the product is cool, everybody wants it. <laughs> just to say it as simple as this. And yeah. Yeah, that sums it up pretty well. Um, <laughs> I have uh, another question on uh, on the, uh, the process with the awards. You entered the award, uh, sorry, you entered the project as your your final project of uh, HTV Berlin in the awards. Did that? It I guess it did bring you some some recognition and some um, let's say questions on where to buy this. Would you would you confirm that? Is that has it brought you further? And are you looking to? let's say, spin that more into the direction of actually producing it? Is that currently uh, an issue? Yeah, it's becoming more and more a uh, topic. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the UX Design Awards, they, um, it really helped to win this award, <laughs> obviously, because um, I think uh, the product and, and my project was promoted in a whole another dimension than I could have ever thought. And I, uh, yeah, actually, fun fact, I even made it into our local newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I wouldn't have made it in there without this award. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and still like getting all these messages on LinkedIn and everything, so too, yeah, it helped. Nice. And, and yeah, it really helped or it really, um, put the focus on maybe I really do want to produce it at some point, or maybe I should look for someone who will produce it with me. And, yeah. Very good. Uh, although you did all the work, I'm glad we could help. Um, I have another question uh, in the direction of the design process from Peter Omotola Ogunirin. Uh, I really hope I pronounced that right. Um, he's a product designer too, and he's asking if you could share the major challenge you faced while building this. It did look pretty smooth. So did you have any challenges that actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, for the presentation, I made it look smooth, of course. You did well. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, um, I think, I can I can remember one specific phone call which I had with um, uh, the person who was assisting me at the the orthopedics engineer. Um, it was at the point that I had to decide on how many sound pads and where on this product, mm -hmm. and I always wanted to do. Um, I wanted to have eight, um, eight uh, like piano tunes and then some percussion tunes. And 
I was hanging on to this thing because I wanted so many sound pads on this uh, product. And he, um, he called me and he said, okay, when you want to do it like that, then you have to realize that you're excluding some people. And I thought, yeah, but I mean, but everybody else would get a better experience probably and, and something like that. And he said, yeah, but just realize that you're going to exclude some people and you don't want to exclude in this product. And I said, well, yes, <laughs> true. And I uh, had to change my direction a little bit when it got to this point. And I think that was something where I realized um, what kind of uh, responsibility I have when I design a product like this. And when I, especially when I advertise it like a product that is uh, inclusive and universal. And yeah, so this, this was a challenge and realizing that, uh, yeah, that I'm not the expert, <laughs> definitely mm. not. And yeah. Okay. Sounds like a really good, uh, yeah, a good collaboration also. Yeah. And a, nice, a nice takeaway. Very good. Our next event will be on the 11th of May, same time, 5 p.m. Berlin time. It's going to be a deep dive on uh, the Corona Warn app by SAP with senior UX designer Anna Maria Oechsner and design director Martin Kraus. And also, I'd like to remind all of you that the current call for entries is still on. So uh, you can enter your competition with your recent products uh, until May 31st. Thanks a lot for joining us today. And uh, yeah, I hope you find more contacts through today's event. I would be really looking forward to see this product eventually. Let us know. Keep us posted and have a very nice evening. Thank you, you all of you too. <laughs>